Ciao, se ti piacciono i miei video iscriviti al canale. Hello! Hello! Hello Rudy! Welcome back on Queen Recensioni Fan, the most followed page by Italian Queen Fans and not only. Hello, hello Roberto, my hello. friend and a uh, uh, bella Italia, viva Bellida. Italia! Bellida! Okay, well, today you are here to talk about some news from your channel and your book. Please, Rudy. Okay. Um, um, first of all, um, about the book, yeah? yeah. Um, as you know, um, uh, due to coronavirus and due to this idea that, uh, like Freddie would have loved it, it will now be released on the same day all over the world next year uh, in 11 languages. Cool. And I know that I promised that the English version and some other languages will come out 2020, but even mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus made that impossible because yeah. it's a two-year plan which would have started in summer with being in a uh, breakthrough in, in, in America yeah. with some uh, world premiere then in Montreux, blah, 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 blah. All of this was canceled. And yeah, um, anyway, but... Um, and a lot of people have pre-ordered the book already, including you and a lot of your friends and followers. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. I It's promise okay. you that you will not be disappointed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in order to shorten the wake up, waiting time, I will do uh, special streaming readings only for those people who have pre-ordered. Now, you know that already. I think I even said that uh, before, but that will be with a code yeah. where only those people who have paid the 10 or the $15 can watch it. So not like I did the pre-fast also on your show for free. No, those people should get uh, something special because they are the most loyal fans who already are waiting for months and months and months. Yeah. Numero uno. Okay. Numero due, uh, when the book is printed, yeah. pre-order community will be the very first who gets the book. The very, oh. very first. Before in a shop, before online, before Amazon, etc. Okay. Three, you will also get a golden backstage pass So in my book tour, which I will bring me all around the world, the backstage pass gives you a meet and greet with me personally. So you meet me, you can make a selfie, we talk quickly, uh, I mean, depending on how much, and it, it's all over, the, it's good for all over the world. So if somebody wants to go for all the Italy, uh, yeah. uh, then you can do that. Number four, um, I also wanted to do something special that I am now doing a reading in person. And I would like the fans in each country to vote Ooh, amazing. where should be the reading. So now with you, it's the question where in Italy should be my first reading Yeah. In person, not streaming. Streaming will start in January. But then yeah. as soon as Corona allows it, I will yeah. physically, and when we can travel again, maybe with the vaccine, you see, and yeah. fly, I will go, I, will, I want to go to Italy and make a, at least one reading in person. And the fans should vote. Should it be Rome? Should it be Milan? Should it be... I don't know, Capri. <laughs> I would like to be you uh, with your fans, sort of the, 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 the coordination place where all the Italian fans, they want to participate. Yeah. They are, you are, you, you can, they should write it to you. And then you tell me, Rudy, it's going to be this city. Okay, I will. Don't, I will. Forget, don't forget that soon, three yes. images will be out there for three different covers mm -hmm. and all the fans around the world will vote what will be the cover that's going to be very very soon okay amazing cool uh, then, very interesting then, 
that is not enough if you are not already uh, a, a subscriber, of course, of Queen Heads and Zioni fan, but I presume that every Italian fan is, uh, is subscribing Queen Heads and Zioni fan because you're the yeah. best. Yeah. But Thank uh, you. there is also the official Queen fan club of Jackie Smith in, in England. And in the new edition of their fan magazine, I was writing an article about the book. I see. I see. Very, very cool stuff. Very interesting <laughs> news, Rudy. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We can wait. We can wait to have this occasion to listen your reading, to, to choose the cover for the pool, etc., etc., etc. Well, regarding, no, uh, yeah. regarding the channel, on my channel, uh, which will soon be mod modernized and be technically better, yeah. there will be soon... Uh, something for queen fans for buying things like that for very little money or also things like that yeah okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah um and the profit will go to charity it will go to the mercury phoenix trust so very it's good. not really it's a shop i will call it doropolis like yeah. metropolis but doropolis yeah and um, again, it's going to be something with a membership only for a certain people, not everybody. But I'm thinking I want to uh, support the Mercury Phoenix Trust because I know that uh, I was there when it was founded by Jim Beach and, and Brian and Roger and, and Mary Austin, yeah. actually. And um, I want to do my share so that uh, we don't forget over coronavirus that there is still AIDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, your okay. turn. Anything. Okay, I have some few questions for you, as you know. I start with the first one. You have seen Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Yeah. Did you know Paul Pranter? If yes, if yes, what's your idea about him? Do you think Freddy was so fragile that he was really manipulated and influenced by him, in your opinion? Yes, I did know Paul Pranter. Uh, in fact, the famous prostitute interview, which brought us together, because you were cutting yourself in. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, about anything after that was a friendship thing, and I, I, I'm very happy that we met. Um, Paul, at, the, at the prostitute interview, he was there, and he was choosing where I can do the interview. First impression was something like a manager, press manager, you know, and what of what he was doing. Later, I learned that he was more than that; that he also was a friend. And I think everybody who knows Freddie Mercury, or who knew Freddie Mercury, mm -hmm. Freddie could not be manipulated by nobody in the world. Yes, he was listening to people, but he was choosing, like Mike Moran, Peter Straker, uh, uh, Mac. Uh, in, in, yeah. in, uh, he was choosing people that he chose, or so myself, that he wanted to have opinions. And then he might have done something that this person was um, uh, recommending. But uh, the manipulation, no. no. I also can tell you, that Paul Pranter, they split. I don't know why, but it must be something which was not nice. Yeah, mm. They split over something which I was not involved. Uh, and I, therefore, I cannot talk about it. But Freddie was very, very, very hurt when Paul Pranter, for a lot of money, was releasing very private photos he had Yes. of Freddy half naked, etc., for a daily newspaper in England, which is called, which is called The Sun, mm -hmm. which is like the, the newspaper with a lot of gossip. Yeah. And Freddy was very hurt. So I think there was a friendship, mm. but there was never manipulation. Okay, okay. Second question. Which of the four Queen members do you resemble the most? Who did you get along with the most? Okay, well, I am. I am not comparing myself to a Queen band member. They are. They are uh, legends and 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 okay. masters and, and, okay. and every four of them. That would be too. Uh, I am too 
too humble. I was just a filmmaker. They are the legends. But I can tell you, uh, I do have, did have, to all four of them, a similar close relationship. Because when, especially when I was young and I went into the inner circle, I was accepted in the inner circle, I realized one thing very quickly. Okay. This is not a band like the Rolling Stones, where Jagger and Richards say what happened, or one of them, and they told they fight. This is not a band like other bands I worked with, yeah, where one or two guys were. This is a band which is democratic, mm. which means even if John Deacon did not say a lot of things in a discussion of the five of us, yeah. he was still as important as Freddie Mercury. So to me, it would have been the most stupidest thing, stupido, yeah. to now be Freddie's guy, you know, which would have been provoked yeah. that they say, okay, he is with Freddie. Ah, 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 ah. No, no, no. Uh, when there was a, a Brian song for a video, Brian was my main partner. Oh. There, was, there was John Deacon and Freddie Mercury writing Friends Will Be Friends. Queen mm -hmm. had always the rule that the that queen member who wrote the song has the most say yeah. in how the video should look so on friends will be friends i was talking to freddie and to john because they wrote this song together which by the way will be sort of a title song for my book my friend freddie friends will be friends so uh, but they are very very different and mm. um, as the thing is that it's not like you would expect. Mm. The people, and I hope they don't mind if I say that, and if they do, uh, echo. Yeah, yeah, echo. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the, mo the people who were fighting the most was the two people who were still in the band. Mm. Roger and Brian. Mm. They were always discussing why. Brian is sort of or actually really the founder of Queen uh -huh. because he founded Smile with Roger, but he was the first. And out of Smile, later Freddie came in that took over the singing. There was another singer, as you know, in Smile. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and then they renamed, the, and it was Freddie's idea to rename it Queen. But from a historic point of view, Brian May is absolutely right to say and think and act as the founder of this band. But in a democratic band, that doesn't really mean anything if all yeah. four of them decide. So the other thing is that Roger was never just a drummer. Roger is a songwriter, actually quite a good singer. You yeah. know, or it's on his sort of thing, yeah. or it's on his thing. So, uh, John Deacon was always in the back. In a, in a discussion of one hour, John Deacon was saying one sentence after 45 minutes, but it was BAM! Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. listening to what are you. Blah, blah, blah. And Freddie was the mother and was always trying to make peace. So please, blah, blah, blah. Oh, not, yeah. in, not in a gay sense, not, uh, not, not like I just did, but he was more say, okay, let's, let's find a way together yeah. and da, da, da. So it's not like you expect, oh, it was the singer and the big diva and da, da, da. No, that was mainly uh, in general, although you cannot say in general because it was from time to time different. But I mean, as you can see, as they allowed me to film and they never did it afterwards. Not even I could film when I, when I was filming One Vision because I persuaded them and I said, I need this for the video. I need it the real, where they also are discussing things. And yeah. then suddenly they're realizing, oh my God, there's a camera. Freddie afterwards said, we will never allow this again <laughs> because you were capturing so many things that we don't really want to be out. So R Roger, I was in many parties. I also was, uh, we were at times the closest to each other because we both, we were both, we were both taking cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. we were both drinking, we both liked women, yeah. uh, we both liked 
practicing rock and roll. Good. With Brian, he's one of the best, if not the best, guitar player of all times, although Jimi Hendrix and Frank Zappa and Keith Richards would have a word in that. Um, it was a completely different thing. Brian doesn't drink, or I know, I don't know, but Brian never smoked. No, never smoked, yeah. never took any drugs. I don't know why I was drinking, I never saw him. So Brian was a completely different kind of relationship, but very interesting. There were times where I was very close with him. I remember he invited me once in his house uh, outside London, and yeah. I filmed him and his father, who was still alive, how the father and he is standing next to each other, and the father explains how he was making the first guitar for Brian. Mm. So Brian allowed me to do this as the only interview with his father. So there was also a relationship. Yeah. And of course, I did sort of two. So John was the most difficult one to approach because he's very much to himself. But John and Freddie had a very intense relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I said, I think, in one of my last streamings backstage, one of these Sundays, that I think the reason why John Deacon is not in Queen anymore is because he loves Freddie so much. Yeah, yeah. Because he thinks, and he told me that, uh, when, when Freddie died, Queen died. This is a legitimate uh, opinion, as mm -hmm. is a legitimate opinion that Brian and Roger want to go on. Yeah. And are probably in some ways more successful than Queen ever was with Freddie. Yeah. However, the legendary Freddie Mercury was the original. Yeah. Every who came after was the second, the third, the fourth singer of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Freddie in the end, well, it was it was very challenging because he's very fast and very 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 challenging. But once we we knew each other, it was very, very rewarding. It was a lot of sweat because he said, okay tomorrow da 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 but looking back, I never ever, and I almost get a little tears in my eyes, I never ever had a relationship with any other musicians and I worked with, the, with great musicians who was that much like a puzzle where you had the feeling it's really one idea brings the other one. Uh, uh, Freddie it was a specialist in that. I think he had the same thing with David Mallet. Yeah, who I respect a lot. He had the same thing with Mike Moran in the music. He had the same thing with, um, 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 what's the name of this lovely lady who did all the costumes, um, help me. Diana Mosley. Diana Mosley, thank you. He had in a different way the same thing with Jim Beach on the business side. So he was, he was a very uh, a good partner in crime for different things and because he knew so much and he was so sensitive. He was good in costumes, he was good in business, he was good in films, he was good in music, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So he could always, you know, but he was always looking for partners. Okay. I hope to okay, next question. You have been guest at Garden Lodge many times. Which yeah. rooms in that house did you prefer and why? Okay, well, there's two answers to that. With, uh, I try to be shorter because you know, but I, and I have time for you, but anyway. Okay. So the, the, the main room, and this will be in my book, I asked uh, Peter Freestone to help me with a drawing of the main, uh, Freddie called it the sitting room, I call it the living room, which had two levels, which was the main room because there was the most of our meetings and, and everything happening. Yeah. But and, and, you, and I wanted your, the, the, the readers, when I'm writing, okay, for example, how we did, um, um, I'm going slightly mad, we were sitting somewhere, I wanted the, the readers to, to say, okay, let me see, wh where is this in the room? Yeah, so that you yeah. can imagine it. But the room with the biggest history of mine, where I have the best memory, was a room I was in only once. Am I going to tell you again a secret? I mean, I'm so bad, you know, my publisher will kill me. He says, you tell me everything. <laughs> um, there was a party, I'm not saying which one, with a lot of people. And there was a woman and I, and we saw each other the first, and we liked each other a lot. 
and it was clear that we want to do something together. I mm. think it was mm, telling us jokes, or maybe was it having sex, or maybe was it, uh, you know? And Freddie was giving us a room for that. Oh, I told cool. him. Um, very interesting, uh, Rudy. <laughs> what? what? Very interesting. In the garden, in the garden this lodge. Is the chapter, garden lodge. This is a whole chapter in the book. How oh. this came about and what happened. But oh. that's the room where, when I saw, uh, because Freddie had something like three bedrooms up there. Not, uh, I was in his bedroom, of course, but that was his bedroom. Or, yeah. He had bathrooms in different colors. Mm. And uh, the rest you have to read in my book. <laughs> oh, no, they are, they are you need to tell me in private, not in live. <laughs> yeah, I, I promise. I promise. Okay. okay, next question. You are writing a book about uh, a friend. Have you ever had a fight with him? A real fight? No. Hmm. I don't remember. And I would remember. Uh, but Difference in opinion, yes. Mm. The, the biggest difference in opinion uh, uh, was actually filmed. It was in The Making of Scandal, oh. uh, which was, which was uh, something where we didn't have a lot of... It was a video that came al along very quickly. Uh, a lot of people that I usually had in my team were not available because the good people usually are booked in advance. Um, we only had certain days for the studio, remember, because next door there was a big blockbuster movie uh, um, um, film. I think it was a Superman or something, and they needed the studio. So there was a lot of restrictions around. I was also on my own, although, although it always says directed by Rudy Doris and Hannes Rosser. Hannes Rosser was nowhere near uh, quite a lot of uh, videos, but not, I mean, that was just, we were splitting up and he was doing something else in the meantime. Um, and um, I had this idea that, um, well, first of all, we came up and, and Freddie loved that, that, that it is the big uh, stages, like, a, like, a, like I said, the sun, like a, paper where uh, where um, 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 which is which is like a gossip paper I don't know if there is an Italian uh, paper like that a lot you... a lot <laughs> there's also Austrian papers and German papers like that. so and uh, and Franny came up with the idea and I love that that because it was red and white and black that they are also are dressed in those three colors And my idea was, because it was basically a performance video, you know, there was no, oh yeah, there was a little bit with photographers, but that sort of was just a little something, yeah. Um, and I wanted to have the first um, verse, the first verse, until the first chorus, that they sing it or that they perform it as silhouettes, mm. which is basically black. And then with the first chorus, woof, you know, the light goes on and this crane move and so on. And that we couldn't talk about anymore. That Freddie learned at the studio when I was going through how I like it. And there was always the trust. And Freddie said, and I, and I understand it. Um, and Freddie said, uh, I cannot perform if you don't see my face. He mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable with that. And I didn't think about that. Because had we discussed it before, Yeah. He would have said that in Garden Lodge like a week before the shoot, but it was all so short. Uh, so, and uh, I didn't see it at the time. I said, okay, I'm going to change it. And then I went away. And if you are listening to what he talks with Brian and Roger, he's not at all happy. Mm. And, and I, yeah, yeah and, and, and people were even asking me, did you have a fight? No, no, no. I was trying to correct it there yeah. in the studio, but that was the closest we came. Freddie and was not well. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he probably had fights with people. I, I cannot say that. I never saw Freddie having. Well, Freddie was very spontaneous and and very direct in saying, "Oh, fuck off" and things like yeah. that. But fight, yeah. Okay. I have never seen him fighting with somebody. I, I mean, I was not. <laughs> In the, in the bedroom when he and Chima were discussing. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. 
Okay, next question. During uh, the writing of the book, was there a moment where you said to yourself, I'll never make it? Yes. Uh, many. Um, thing is, I started in 2017. Uh, and um, I was doing the concept and what kind of chapters I'm planning, which were about 40 at the time. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote something like 18, 19. Actually, I rewrote many of those because I didn't like them later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I had to do a film. And then I was, I remember I was going in Austria outside of Vienna at the secret place, which is yeah. enough. But where nobody can reach me for a long weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I was writing four more. But it was always in between. And, uh, and I thought to myself, if I do it like that, I'm never going to finish this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it sort of came in myself, I have to have a final long period where I'm going somewhere, not being disturbed, and I just get home when I finish the book which finally became Miami, and then through yeah. Corona, it became longer than explained. But also, in the beginning, I wasn't sure how much I... How should I say this? I didn't find the... If Mick Jagger would say the fine line mm -hmm. uh, of telling something I haven't told and not telling something that Freddie wouldn't like me to tell, or that Queen fans just... Uh, it, it would be too much, because we, after all, he's a legend. Yeah. There is so things that I will never tell. That was clear. But then I, would, I had to find a style where I then, it helped me, like I was thinking like a, for a feature film, I was trying to always have a little scene at the beginning where yeah. I could make a little dialogue and Freddie said this to Roger or to Brian. And then on, I was starting with that. And, and uh, so I had to develop. Then once I had that, I got absolutely... I, I'm amazed. I mean, the thing is, my plan, by the way, which I haven't told anybody, yeah. is uh, that I soon go to uh, another secret place. Now, it's going to be probably Spain okay. or Italy um, and start with my autobiography because I want to write the next book. And knowing that we now have to focus to get this book out. Yeah. yeah but okay. the writing process is, is something I'm looking forward to. It's, it's fun now. I know how to do it now. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Like when you're beginning to become a good director. See, my books were always in between books. Now, well, except for the FICO book. Yeah, but that was also one. With, uh, but the other books were like, yeah, oh, let's quickly do a book on the rock scene in Germany or this and that. And now I sort of really became a writer. And I also have fun because I don't need anything. Just mm. my, my brain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good. And the, Okay. Okay. Next question. At the beginning of your career, was there a director you admire who then inspired you to become a videomaker? Oh, absolutely. Um, um, well, on the one hand, in terms of music videos, I very early found out that a lot of music videos I liked hmm. or I would like to have done myself <laughs> were directed by David Mallet cool. who later became a friend of mine and in a way I was taking his role as the main yeah. queen video maker we're still yeah. friends yeah because he also did videos but in, from a certain point on I did all of them okay but also David Byrne of Talking Heads, who was not a classic director, but a creative mind. For example, there's this great uh, show now that he, that he has out on, uh, uh, the last, uh, on, on, on Broadway and then on television. He, was, uh, he did a lot of things I loved, like, like, uh, like Sledgehammer and, and things like that. And also Peter Gabriel's videos, whoever was the director. But in terms of movies, I like to laugh. I like to, I like to laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> and uh, 
So I liked always as a movie director, uh, Woody Allen, who was in the early Woody Allen. And then of course the classics, I mean, uh, um, Steven Spielberg, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, um, yeah. And, and also, um, uh, in a way, Martin Scorsese, although, for example, I told him that once and he was very, um, that was maybe a little bit, um, he was very, uh, how should I say, he was very um, not happy. Okay. Um, because his movie on the Rolling Stones, I said to him, it would have been better if you don't make the first half hour about yourself, but about the band that you're portraying and you didn't like them at all. <laughs> <laughs> As I always say what I think. But I, I, even he is, uh, is a friend. Uh, is, is a colleague, sorry, not a friend. Yeah. Please. Okay. As a spectator, which movie about music and a musician or a band do you prefer and why? Well, in the very uh, early stages, uh, and this might be too early for your audience. Um, there was a, a, a director which I now didn't name because he's unfortunately in heaven. His name is uh, Pennebaker. Mm. He was the, the, the person who was doing the first Bob Dylan documentaries. Mm. And amongst that is a documentary which is called Don't Look Back. It's mm. still in black and white. Mm. And he was following Dylan on tour And then he did also a similar documentary on the Rolling Stones. And when I started, I always said, wow, this guy came close to this guy's backstage. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and those two are classics. And then there is quite, um, there's quite a lot. I mean, maybe I was something like with other people together, a little bit of a pioneer, because after my time, I think there is now out a lot of good uh, music films yeah. talking about documentaries. If you talk about music films in terms of movies, I have to say that groundbreaking is a movie of a person who had birthday uh, yesterday or would have been 80 years old, Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa, yeah. 200 motels. That was the beginning of music film in a way, like Bohemian Rhapsody was the beginning of music video. But also, for example, a movie like the Rocky Horror Picture Show mm -hmm. is also a fantastic classic yeah. based yeah. on a stage show. But at the time, that was like very high class music videos and stuff. And then don't forget that the Beatles made a lot of uh, good, interesting movies until Yellow Submarine as Animation or others, which, are, which, which you can name. So I think that the genre, I don't know what the Italian word for genre is, it's French, the, uh, of, of music film so the, 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 um, had the advantage that from the 60s on, Actually, the 50s, Fred Astaire, Pretty good great films, you yeah. know? Uh, um, there, would, there would be no, no Michael Jackson without Fred Astaire, you know what I mean? In, in, in a way, you know? I, hope, I, hope uh, and yeah. I always said Michael Jackson is the best dancer since Fred Astaire, which I know. Yeah? Um, so we had the privilege of having a lot of music and film very early, I think, produced a lot of good and entertaining products. Okay. If you were to produce a new Live Aid today, which artist would you call? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time. You know that I was involved in the first Live Aid. Yeah. With Bob Geldof. Um, and I was like, you know, this was a pa. Um, this is, this is, this one you haven't told me before. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I know because, well, this, I cannot say. See, what I think, let me say the following. Live Aid was a very important uh, uh, milestone in music history and rock and roll or, or pop culture history. I played a very small part of it, but I played a part of it, thank God. I was organizing an Austrian supergroup, yeah. which also was uh, collecting millions right after the, um, uh, after the English, before the American. And Bob Geldof is really a friend of mine. Okay. Um, and um, there was a 
life aids a second one. And I think if you ever do something like this again, you must think in new directions. After COVID especially, but even before COVID. I think that the future of this is streaming and it's not so important that uh, all the people are together. It's more important that people do something together. Yeah. I mean, look at the many, many music videos nowadays where one guy is in Atlanta and the other one is in Milan. And the other. Yeah. So it has to be different. And that's something that I haven't talked to Bob Geldof in, in quite a long time. I basically uh, stayed with him uh, for once in Roger Taylor's house for a few days because oh. he was there. Roger had a few houses in London <laughs> when, when, he's, when Bob Geldof was separating from uh, Paula Yates. Mm. And um, so we had also evenings where we discussed. But I think Bob Geldof would agree as sort of the fa godfather of life aid. Yeah. It has to be different and also see it probably, I was approached by people for doing something like that for the environment. And um, many artists do this. I mean, of course, one per band which uh, comes into my mind, which must be part of that is U2. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they are, yeah, not because, I mean, it's not so much of only about how big is somebody, but they've done it so many times in their regular work. Uh, of course, something like that could never be, could never happen without Queen. Yeah? I mean, Queen was the moment of Life Aid One. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it that this was the moment of the moments. Yeah. But there is so many young thing, young bands and young artists who are not even working as a live band, which you would have to integrate. So that's, you have to sit down and would have to make a concept. I would have to sit down for a week or two with other creative people to come up with something. So it's not that easy. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. no problem. <laughs> okay, no problem. Understandable. Uh, next question. Talking about your kids, mm -hmm. have they ever asked you to bring them some rock star autograph if so which ones the answer is no <laughs> no because no. fans don't give a fuck mm. <laughs> oh really really no well i mean no no i mean what, what, it, for some time listen it is, this was the, the 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 answer which should shock yeah okay here is the thing number one my sons do not watch television never oh. did my sons do not read newspapers they are all online and social media Okay. Yes, they were yeah. little. They, in fact, introduced me to social media. Without my sons, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Um, and um, the thing is that when they were growing up, I mean, so uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, yeah, of course, they were fans of Papa. I mean, both of them wanted to become a, a yeah. music director but you know, after they want to be a fire fighter or or or, or a policeman or whatever yeah then, but then comes of course and they 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 said they were not the music of those old bands of the famous that didn't mean anything to them david bowie queen rolling stones etc i even made younger bands like uh age blocks or or or, or others but i got them when they when my old, older son became like 13, 14, the age that Benjamin is now, uh, when uh, they went through my old-fashioned CD collection and said, hey, and saw rappers in there, like Snoop Dogg. And I said, wow, you have, you have, a, I said, yeah, yeah, I worked with him. What? <laughs> that was more than Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. that meant some at that time. So, and once they are, were discovering that, it started. Now, both of them go into a high school which focuses on music. So, uh, Ruby, although he is now sure that he wants to become a, and also study sports because he's very good in sports. Um, is also uh, um, um, has a uh, is is in a choir and they're singing. I mean, real singing, yeah, like notes and so on. Um, 
And now what I do now is I do it the other way around. When we talk or discuss music, uh, I te she, they play me what they are listening to or the videos they are watching, and it's very interesting. Yeah. So it's basically the other way around. I have to say, I was bringing them every now and then uh, autographs, and I was keeping it for them with dedications because I thought maybe later uh, they are interested. But Absolutely. while going along, uh, uh, it was it says too much age difference, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, they don't. It's like I'm also keeping all all the things that they ever did from a, from three or four years that they made in school for me. You know, like you do Christmas something for Daddy and so on. I kept everything, and they were laughing <laughs> later. I was like, well, there will come a time. Well, it's fun that we go through this and, uh, you know, and I keep it because it's, it's my sons. But no, uh, um, uh, there were no wishes yet. Maybe it comes, maybe it comes, but it would have to go closer together. So in other words, I would have to work with younger artists and they have to grow up so yeah. that they are interested in older artists than now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I have the last question, Rudy. What do they think, your guys? about Queen, I know it's an old group, no? Okay. But what do they think about his father and the privilege to work with them? So, well, first of all, they very much respect and like Queen, especially Ruby, because Ruby is now singing in a choir, understands how great Queen was with the voices. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course, they know the, the big hits, so... Uh, see, we don't, I don't ask them and say, uh, but I, I think they're pretty, think it's pretty cool that yeah. Papa. Uh, oh, I, really. I, yeah. I, <laughs> and don't forget, I was a single dad for 10 years when they were, when they were three and six mm -hmm. until they were 13 and, and 16. Uh, uh, I was doing the job of a mother and a father. So that brings you very close to your sons. I mean, um, um, I want to say one thing. I'm, I'm going to be alone on the 24th of December mm. uh, because we decided, since I'm not part of the household, because they're living with the mother in the moment and her, her husband, um, we're going to, yeah, um, I'm going to do a backstage special on Thursday on the 24th for all the people who are alone. Mm. Um, this is now not so, f it is also funny, that's the thing, but um, because I felt suddenly, because I'll be alone on the 24th for the first time in my life, mm -hmm. which is not such a big thing, and I'm also alone in a way that I think we don't really have that much to celebrate this Christmas. Mm -hmm. We are in a pretty difficult situation, COVID, blah, blah, everybody yeah. has it here, but That's what I want to say to your viewers and followers and friends and fans. If you love your loved ones, like grandma, grandpa, father, maybe even son, send, give them a Christmas present, not visiting them. Stay mm -hmm. home. Yeah. I'm gonna, I do this. I, mm -hmm. I, I canceled, you know, because of, I was invited, of course, and, blah, 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 and I said, listen, First of all, I had meetings all week because I'm in the, in the middle of preparing a really big international project. Yeah. I had five days of meetings with people that, you know, I'm, I was tested when I came from here. But now, I mean, last five days, number one. Number two, I don't know who they meet. And, you know, we, we, we can make it next to Christmas, you know. And I also don't want any presents. Uh, I mean, I always tell them they don't have to give me anything for Christmas. They should make a piece of art, like a little drawing or, or something. Or not. But, uh, and we're going to go uh, and, uh, for a walk on the 23rd outside a little bit uh, and, and talk. Um, but um, I sort of canceled Christmas uh, because also the last, I don't want to be so sad, you know, I'm, as I say, and that's important yeah. to laugh. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> news, the news with, with the mutation and England and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I said it, I, I watched Freddie Mercury die, not physically, but more or less. And, and I said, the first two years, 
every second, third month, they had to change the opinions. Oh, you can't get AIDS like this. Oh, suddenly you can. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I always said, be careful. We don't know how it's really, there's, there's going to be stuff that we can't even imagine because it's fucking new. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but also what is very important. Yeah. A good friend of mine, I learned the day before yesterday, almost died. Actually, my best friend oh. from school. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's good. He's fine. But uh, I'm probably going to make a documentary on him where he tells his story because he was that close. And he was in the, in, the IC, in, the, in the intensive care. There were 17 beds and he was number 16. Oh. And he said, imagine uh, I would have been number 19. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have got, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. My, we went to school together. We did everything together. He's a, he's a, and, um, and we have to thank the people who risk their lives in the hospitals and everywhere, especially all around the world. Right. Exactly. We have no idea what they are doing. It's, it's, it's more than, than a human usually can, can take, risking their lives for us. And yes. the least we fucking can do is take care, but not only what anybody tells us, but be more careful. If they say yeah. two meters, make four meters distance. If they, I, I wear the mask everywhere. I'm not just inside and out. No, everywhere, you know, and so on and so on. This is the least we can do, you know, and let's have a Christmas, which is different. Stay home. Uh, stay. Yes, if you are in the household, of course, be with your family, but Absolutely. don't risk the lives of your loved ones because it's Christmas and we usually do that. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry yeah. to... to So, no, so, no, no, it's very well brain. said, Rudy. Well said, it's good, it's very good, no problem. Good. Well, well, Rudy, we have finished the streaming, the interview. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for your words, Rudy. Well, Thank I also you. have to say that you are you're doing quite a few things online, yeah. and, I, and I say that I am actually supporting uh, your, your stuff, and anybody who has not okay. done that, uh, uh, Roberto is not only the super, super, super fan of Queen, Uh, and Italy, for sure, maybe even uh, in all of Europe, uh, maybe even amongst the first three in all the world. <laughs> maybe you. Once we make a competition, the super, super yeah. fan, a television show with the best Queen fans around the world. Anyway, okay. uh, but um, I think you're doing a lot of very good stuff. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I like is that not only that you know a lot of things about Queen, but you are your main mission is to keep uh, the music and the, and, and the projects alive. And, yeah, uh, right, right. And my motivation as well. So we are brothers in arms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rudy. Okay. Thank you for your word, time, kindness, <laughs> as, always, okay. as always, as always. And we'll see you in your streaming on 24th, okay? 24th, uh, which is the, the, the Thursday, yeah. um, it's going to be on IGTV, on Instagram, it's going to be on Facebook at Rudy Dolizar Official, it's also going to be on the YouTube channel, Rudy Dolizar Storvo TV, on the YouTube channel, as, as I do every Sunday, also on the, on the Thursday, I do a live chat while uh, the streaming runs. So I say, still, I, we, in, in America, they say happy holidays because there's also, you know, Jewish uh, uh, people uh, of the Jewish religion. We in Austria, because there is 90% Catholics who say Merry Christmas, yeah. I say, um, do Christmas, but do a Christmas with thinking, and I love you all. Okay, thank you. Bye. You too, thank you. Merry Christmas to all. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye, Rudy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.